Hey everyone, I'm Jake. Before I dive into this wild ride of a story, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, alright? Trust me, you're gonna want to stick around for this one. There I was, living what I thought was the American dream with my beautiful wife, Melissa. We had it all. Good jobs, a nice house, and big plans for the future. But life has a way of throwing curveballs, doesn't it? Babe, I think we should start trying for a baby, Melissa said one night over dinner. I nearly choked on my pasta. Yeah? You think we're ready? She nodded, her eyes sparkling. I've never been more sure of anything. Little did we know that conversation would kick off years of heartache and frustration. Month after month, negative pregnancy tests piled up. We tried everything. Tracking ovulation, special diets, you name it, nothing worked. Maybe it's just not meant to be. I said one night, holding Melissa as she cried. She looked up at me, determination in her eyes. No, Jake, we're not giving up. That's my girl, always the fighter. And man, did we need that fighting spirit, especially when it came to dealing with my family, particularly my sister Amber. Now don't get me wrong, I love Amber, but she's always been intense. Growing up, she was more like a third parent than a sister, always checking up on me, getting involved in my business. Jake, you sure about Melissa? Amber asked me once, early in our relationship. I just don't want you to get hurt, I brushed her off. Amber, I'm a big boy. I can handle my own relationships. But as Melissa and I struggled with infertility, Amber's concern only grew. She'd call all the time, asking for updates, offering unsolicited advice. Have you thought about adoption, she'd say. Or, maybe it's a sign you're not ready for kids. It was exhausting trying to balance my loyalty to my sister with my commitment to Melissa and our dreams. But everything changed the day Melissa burst into our bedroom, waving a positive pregnancy test. We did it, Jake! We're pregnant! I've never felt joy like that moment. We laughed, we cried, we started planning for the future we'd been dreaming of. My parents were over the moon when we told them. Mom immediately started talking about knitting baby blankets while Dad pretended not to tear up. But Amber, her reaction was off. Oh, she said, her voice flat. Congratulations, I guess. Mm -hmm. I tried to brush it off. Amber had just gone through a nasty breakup. She was probably just stressed, right? But as Melissa's belly grew, so did the tension with my sister. The day Melissa and I started planning our baby shower was when things really started to go south. We were sitting in our living room, surrounded by color swatches and party favor samples, when my phone buzzed. It was Amber. Hey, sis, what's up? I answered. Jake, I heard you're planning the baby shower. Why wasn't I asked to help? I glanced at Melissa, who was already tensing up. We're just getting started, Amber. We haven't asked anyone for help yet. Right. I'm sure Melissa's family is all over it, though. Before I could respond, she hung up. Melissa looked at me, her eyes worried. Maybe we should ask her to help? I nodded, trying to keep the peace. Yeah, I'll give her a call later. But involving Amber only made things worse. Every suggestion Melissa made, Amber shot down. It was exhausting trying to mediate between them. One day, while discussing party favors, Amber dropped a bomb. Are you sure you want to do blue? I mean, given your history, Melissa, maybe it's best not to jinx it. The room went silent. Melissa's face crumpled, and I saw red. Amber, that's enough, I snapped. Apologize to Melissa, now. Amber rolled her eyes. Oh, come on, I'm just being realistic. I watched as Melissa excused herself, heading to the bathroom. I could hear her quiet sobs from down the hall. Jake, I'm sorry, Amber said, not sounding sorry at all. But someone has to look out for you. What if something goes wrong? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Nothing's going to go wrong. And even if it did, that's for me and Melissa to deal with, not you. As the weeks went on, Melissa became more and more uncomfortable around Amber. She'd make excuses not to be around when Amber came over, leaving me to deal with my sister alone. One afternoon, I stopped by my parents' house to drop off some old baby gear they'd offered to store for us. As I approached the front door, I heard voices inside. I'm telling you, Mom, something's not right with Melissa, Amber was saying. She's got Jake wrapped around her finger. What if she's faking this whole pregnancy thing? I couldn't believe my ears. I burst through the door, startling both Amber and my mom. How dare you? I growled at Amber. After everything Melissa and I have been through, how can you say something like that? 
Amber tried to backpedal, claiming she was just worried about me. We argued for what felt like hours, with my parents trying to play peacemakers. In the end, Amber apologized, but I could tell she didn't mean it. Finally, the day of the baby shower arrived. Melissa looked beautiful in her blue maternity dress, but I could see the strain in her eyes. It's going to be okay, I assured her, giving her hand a squeeze. The party was in full swing when Amber finally showed up, an hour late and looking like she'd rather be anywhere else. Sorry I'm late, she muttered, not meeting anyone's eyes. I tried to keep things light, making sure Amber and Melissa were never left alone together, but I could feel the tension building like a pot about to boil over. As Melissa opened gifts cooing over tiny onesies and soft blankets, I caught Amber glaring at her from across the room. My stomach churned. Something told me. This was the calm before the storm, and I had no idea how to stop what was coming. The baby shower was in full swing, but I couldn't shake this feeling of dread. Melissa was opening gifts, surrounded by our friends and family, when I noticed Amber knocking back another glass of champagne. That's when all hell broke loose. You don't deserve any of this, Amber suddenly shouted, pointing at Melissa. The room went dead silent. Melissa froze, a tiny pair of booties clutched in her hands. What? Amber stumbled forward. You heard me. You stole my brother, and now you're stealing my family with this, this miracle baby. I stepped between them. Amber, that's enough. You need to leave. No, Jake, you need to wake up. Amber's voice was getting louder. She's trapped you. She probably isn't even really pregnant. Gasps echoed around the room. Melissa burst into tears, and I saw red. How dare you? I roared. Melissa has been nothing but kind to you, even when you've been horrible to her. She's my wife, Amber, my family. Amber sneered. Family, I'm your family. I've always been there for you. Yeah, well, maybe I don't want you there anymore, I shot back. The room erupted into chaos. My parents tried to calm Amber down while Melissa's family rallied around her. Friends awkwardly shuffled towards the exit. You're choosing her over me? Amber screamed. After everything I've done for you? I stood my ground. Yes, I am. Every single time. What happened next seemed to unfold in slow motion. Amber's face contorted with rage, and she lunged towards Melissa, her hands outstretched towards my wife's swollen belly. If I can't have a baby, neither can you, she shrieked. I moved without thinking, grabbing Amber and wrestling her away from Melissa. Get out, I yelled, dragging my sister towards the door. Get out and don't come back. I shoved Amber outside and slammed the door, locking it behind her. I could hear her pounding on the door, screaming obscenities. When I turned back to the room, Melissa was curled up on the couch, sobbing uncontrollably. Her mother was trying to comfort her, but Melissa was inconsolable. We need to get her to a doctor, I said, my voice shaking. Now! The next few hours were a blur. The emergency room, the worried looks from the doctors, the sound of our baby's heartbeat on the monitor. When the doctor finally said everything looked okay, I broke down in relief. The baby's fine, Jake. Melissa whispered, squeezing my hand. But I don't think I am. I looked at my wife, really looked at her. The dark circles under her eyes, the way her hand protectively cradled her belly. This was my fault. I'd let Amber's behavior go on for too long, always making excuses for her. I'm so sorry, Mel, I said, my voice cracking. This is all my fault. Melissa shook her head. It's not your fault. It's Amber's. But Jake, I can't... I can't do this anymore. I can't have her in our lives. I nodded, a weight lifting off my shoulders. I know, and she won't be. I promise you, Melissa. From now on, it's just us and our baby. Amber is out of our lives for good. As we left the hospital, my phone buzzed with messages and missed calls from Amber. Without hesitation, I blocked her number. Let's go home, I said to Melissa, wrapping my arm around her. We've got a nursery to finish. After the baby shower disaster, I started digging into Amber's past behavior. What I found left me shocked and angry. Jake, honey, what's wrong? Melissa asked, finding me hunched over my laptop late one night. I looked up, my eyes burning. I've been talking to some old friends. Did you know Amber sabotaged my relationship with Sarah in college? Melissa's eyes widened. What? How? 
Apparently, she told Sarah I was cheating on her, and that's not all. Remember Alex from work? Amber convinced her I wasn't over my ex. The more I uncovered, the angrier I got. Years of manipulation and lies, all because Amber couldn't stand to see me happy with someone else. The next day I confronted my parents. Did you know about this? I demanded, showing them the evidence I'd gathered. Mom looked away, guilt written all over her face. Dad sighed heavily. We, we thought we were protecting you, Jake. Amber always said she was looking out for your best interests. Looking out for me, she ruined every relationship I've ever had, I shouted. And you let her do it. Their silence was all the confirmation I needed. I left their house feeling betrayed, not just by Amber, but by the people who were supposed to protect me from this kind of toxicity. A few days later, Amber showed up at our door. Jake, please, she begged. I'm sorry, I never meant to hurt you or Melissa. I, I need help. For a moment, I almost wavered. But then I remembered Melissa's tears, the fear we'd felt for our baby. No, Amber, I said firmly. I'm glad you're getting help, but I can't have you in my life anymore. My family comes first now. But I'm your family, she cried. I shook my head. Not anymore. Goodbye, Amber. Closing that door felt like closing a chapter of my life. It hurt, but I knew it was necessary. Months passed, and soon enough, Melissa was in labor. After hours of grueling work, our beautiful daughter, Lily, came into the world. She's perfect, I whispered, cradling her tiny form. Melissa smiled tiredly. She is, and she's ours, Jake, just ours. Our parents came to visit, cooing over their granddaughter. The absence of Amber was noticeable, but the peace it brought was worth it. As we settled into parenthood, life took on a new rhythm. Sleepless nights, diaper changes, and first smiles filled our days. Lily grew, and so did our love for her and each other. Two years flew by in a blink. Lily was toddling around, babbling happily when I got a call from an old family friend. Jake, I thought you should know. Amber lost her job. She's been unstable, lashing out at co-workers, missing deadlines. I thanked them for letting me know and hung up. Part of me felt vindicated, knowing Amber was facing consequences for her actions, but mostly, I felt sad for the sister I'd lost. Everything okay? Melissa asked, bouncing Lily on her hip. I looked at them, my wife, my daughter, my world, and smiled. Yeah, everything's great. How about we go to the park? As we walked in the sunshine, Lily's laughter ringing out, I realized something. The family I'd chosen, the one I'd fought for, was all I needed. The past was behind us and our future was bright. I love you, Jake, Melissa said, squeezing my hand. I squeezed back. I love you too, both of you, always. And in that moment, I knew that no matter what life threw at us next, we'd face it together, as a family, our family. The story has come to an end. Now, I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have cut ties with Amber completely? or given her another chance after she said she needed help. It's a tough call, isn't it? Family is complicated, and sometimes the lines between loyalty and self-preservation get blurry. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear what you'd do in this situation. And hey, if you enjoyed this roller coaster of a story, why not hit that like button? It really helps out the channel. Oh, and if you want to catch more stories like this one, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next video.